What if I told you only 16% of our high school seniors are proficient in mathematics and interested in a STEM career? What if I told you that 33% of teachers, yes, 33% of teachers are teaching STEM and have a STEM degree? And what if I told you there are 2.6 million jobs that go unfulfilled in the STEM industry? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can make STEM more attractive and likable by your students. Welcome to the Cantus Simmons Show. Welcome to the Cantus Simmons Show. Whether you're watching this on YouTube, whether you're listening to this on iTunes or Google Podcasts, welcome. Welcome to this platform. Uh, this is my platform where I use it to inspire students to succeed in school and succeed in life, as well as helping teachers and parents better serve their students. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about five, yes, five ways to make STEM more attractive and more likable to your students. Now, if you've ever, if you've ever heard my story, you know that I'm a STEM baby. Yes, I grew up on science, technology, engineering, and math. Why? Because some kind of way in the fifth grade, um, a small company by the name of KIA was just so attractive to me that uh, I fell in love with science and math. And today I push STEM all across the world, inspiring students to learn STEM, love STEM, and live STEM. And in this video, I'm gonna give you five ways, five ways that teachers and parents can make STEM more attractive and likable. Now, because you're here, uh, whether you're a student or a parent, I mean, a teacher or a parent, or even a student, I wanna give you a free gift for being here. I know that it's a challenge sometimes to have the proper study skills that go about producing great study habits, which go about producing great grades. That's why I want to offer you the opportunity to uh, have my study skills uh, challenge for free. Uh, the way it works is this. You click the link down below, go to cantasimmons.com forward slash study skills in every single day for the next seven days. I'll show you some really cool study tips, some really cool study habits that you can put in your life so that you can have some amazing grades. Just because you're here, I want to help you be able to study, help you be able to get some better grades, some good grades, whether it's in STEM or another field. Simply go over to cantissimmons.com forward slash study skills. Also, uh, because you're here, I want to give you a copy of my best selling book, number one school bestseller. It's called Play Your A Game. It's all about how to stay focused, how to remain motivated, and succeed in school and life. And if you want a copy of this book or you know a young person or a college student that would love this book, hey, I'll send you a copy of this book absolutely free. All I ask you to do is to take care of the shipping and handling. Simply go over to playyouragamebook.com, playyouragamebook.com. Go there, let me know where to send the book, take care of the small shipping and handling fee, and uh, we will uh, send that off to you. All right, so let's jump right into it. Let's jump right into it. I believe STEM is everywhere. Now, if you don't know what STEM is, STEM is an initiative of our country, actually of our world, where now we realize that we need more scientists engineers, mathematicians doing some great work. And so STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math has been instituted in our schools whereby now we can raise the awareness of these fields because there are so many jobs and opportunities that are out there. As I mentioned earlier, uh, only about 16% of our high school seniors are actually proficient in math when they graduate. And then, you know, a small percentage of them are now interested in a STEM career. Right now, today, we have teachers. You may be a teacher. You may know a teacher who's actually teaching a STEM subject but doesn't have a STEM degree. Now, that could be due to many different reasons. 
And I know a lot of teachers who are teaching STEM because they have to, and they are doing their best to learn it as they go. And I salute those teachers for doing that. So what I want to do today, I want to give you five, yes, five things that you can do, whether you're a parent or an educator, to make STEM more attractive and more likable. Number one, number one, make STEM as practical as possible. Now, you realize that uh, kids or students want to see theory in action. For example, uh, you may teach something in a class. Kids today, they want to know cause and effect, right? Kids are always asking questions like, hey, what caused that? Why did that happen? Why did it turn green? Why did it go up? So what you want to do is whether you're teaching something in class or outside of class or something that's in everyday life, you want to make it practical. Make it as practical as possible, even if you have to give them like some hands-on experience, right? Hands-on where we take this bottle of water and now, right now we see the bottle of water as a liquid. And then we took the take the bottle of water and put it in the freezer. And then now we pull it out and we now notice that the water's turned to a solid. How now can we talk about water, liquids and solids in that practical demonstration of just putting some water in the freezer. This is how now we can make STEM practical and possible. So number one, to be to, to make STEM more attractive and likable, make it as practical and possible as, as possible. How about that, right? Make it as practical and possible uh, as possible. All right, number two, make STEM fascinating. Yes, make STEM fas fa uh, fascinating. Tie what you're talking about. Uh, tie your topics to things that fascinate and challenge your students. Now, we realize that today that most students, their attention span, I'm not going to say that attention, uh, attention, attention span is short, but we live in a generation now where there are so many different things that are fighting for our young people's attention. How can you take something that's fascinating to them and turn it into, turn it into something that's now uh, going to challenge them or make them think? Right. For example, I know there is a very popular video game called Fortnite. Right. And maybe you've heard of Fortnite. Maybe you haven't seen Fortnite, but your kids are right, interested in Fortnite. How can we make turn Fortnite into a topic in your classroom or at home? How can we now take something that they're interested in and now challenge them to think out of the box where now we can incorporate? Fortnite, and we can incorporate the topics of STEM, like where these video games are concerned, like what makes up the video game? What components of technology and mathematics make up the video game? When we're calculating the amount of points that a student gets in, let's say Fortnite, how can we relate that to mathematics? So number two, you want to make STEM fascinating. Tie it to topics that fascinate your students and uh, that grab their attention and even challenge them. All right, here's number three. Number three, number three, make it challenging. Challenge your students' mind and have them apply the concepts they learn right away. You know, I've, I've often seen, I've often um, have noticed even with myself and other students and people that I work with, you know, when somebody, when you teach somebody something or when someone learns something, if they don't apply it immediately, they tend to forget about it, right? So how can you make STEM more challenging? So you're teaching a concept, uh, you're bringing up a topic, maybe you're having a discussion at home and your students are learning an element of STEM. How can you now challenge them immediately? It challenges them immediately to come up with other solutions, to uh, create a scenario, to create a problem and develop certain concepts out of what you just learned them, right? You learn something 
and then you apply it. For example, we go back to the water, right? Maybe we can talk about liquids and solids, right? We can talk about uh, density. We can talk about volume. What now, if we immediately, as we talk about these things, we have them apply it immediately, right? We have them apply it immediately. Or maybe we can say, okay, how long does it take for this water to turn to a solid? And at what degree should the freezer be at? And then how much time does it take to turn to a solid, right? This is something that we can immediately challenge them to do. Why? Because they're learning the concept and I'm encouraging you to have them apply it immediately. Students love challenges. All right. Number four, number four, the fourth way to make STEM more uh, appealing and likable is to make it real. Now, I have, you know, I've spoken all over this world on STEM. I've spoken at, uh, spoken at many conferences, high schools and career days and and by the way, if you would love for me to come to your school or come to your conference, hey, simply let me know. Just go over to CantusSimmons.com and you'll see a link there for my booking manager. And, you know, we'll do our best to make it happen to come to your event. But I believe uh, I noticed that a lot of schools, normally in elementary school to middle school, uh, they have a lot of career days. Right. And we would have this career day maybe once a year. We have different parents and adults come in to talk about their career. What if we could bring people working in the STEM field into the classroom all year long? Rather than just doing one career day, we can make STEM real by exposing our students to real people who are working real STEM jobs. I believe exposure is everything. You know, one of the ways that I ended up working at NASA was that even as a high school student, I was exposed to things of, of the science field. I was exposed to scientists. I was exposed to chemists and engineers. When I, um, I think my, maybe my second year in college, I participated in a, an undergraduate um, NASA research program where it exposed me to people that were working in the field, right? So if we're gonna make STEM real, Expose them to real STEM role models. Yes, can we find somebody in our community that we can bring in when we're talking about a certain topic, right? Maybe um, we can find an engineer. Maybe, you know, like behind my house, they're doing some work over here and um, Georgia Power is out there doing some work. Can we bring somebody in from Georgia Power to speak to our students? Maybe when we're talking about electricity. Maybe when we're talking about certain things that's dealing with physics or engineering, my suggestion is this. Don't just wait to career day to expose our students to real life people. All right. We can make it more appealing. Number four, by making it real, exposing our students to real people in the STEM fields as role models. All right. Number five, number five, the fifth way to make STEM more appealing more attractive and more likable, it's by making STEM fun. You know, one of the things that I heard growing up, and maybe you hear it throughout your school and with your students, is that STEM is hard. Math is hard. Science is hard. It's challenging. Physics is hard. Yeah, we've heard that. But I'm pretty sure there's some things, some hard things, that our students are able to do because they made it fun, right? I believe when you make STEM fun, it captures the attention of our students. Listen, everybody loves a little fun. You know, I was surveying some teachers some years ago and I said, hey, what's the, what's the biggest challenge that you're having with your students? And they said, hey, my students are not motivated. They're not focused. I've never, ever seen a young person not be motivated and focused when they're playing a video game, when they're having fun on the playground, when they're playing some sport that they love. How can we make STEM fun? Studies have proved that during games and fun experience that the brain is much more receptive to learning. Rewards, 
achievements, badges, and general gamified experiences can be implemented both online and offline in class. How can we turn what we learn into a game? Can we have a classroom competition? Can we uh, put our students in groups and now you're lecturing and now based on how the groups answer the question, they get certain points and certain rewards. Can you make fun? Can you make STEM fun? Can you make it fun at home? Could you walk into a grocery store and you have your grocery list, right? And uh, as you're putting things in the buggy, could you have your student find the price of that item and we make it fun to see if we can get within $10 of the total amount in the buggy to the total amount at the cash register? Can we talk about how let's not use Siri or use our uh, GPS to get to a certain location, let's use um, maybe the sun. Let's use landmarks to determine uh, even how fast the car is driving, how long would it take to get to grandma's house? Can we make it fun? Can we make it challenging? Can we make STEM real? Can we make STEM practical? Can we make STEM fascinating? I believe we can. I really believe we can. I challenge you, number one, to make STEM as practical, make it as practical as possible in your classroom and outside, and outside the classroom. Make STEM fascinating. Talk about topics that's going to grab the attention of your student. Number three, make it challenging. Hey, when you teach something, challenge your students to apply it and apply it immediately. Number four, make it real. Expose your students to real people real role models who are doing real jobs in the STEM field. And number five, make it fun. You know, um, I'm really passionate about this topic, as you can see, right? But one thing I do realize is that there are so many amazing opportunities out here for our students. And what we do today, how we capture them today, wherever they may be, will help them in the future. And my encouragement is, is, is to capture them as early as possible, as early as we possibly can, so they can learn STEM, love STEM, and live out STEM. All right. Now, thank you so much for watching this video. Was this helpful? Was this good? If you've enjoyed this, hey, give me a few likes. Give me a few hearts. Share this with another teacher, another educator, another parent that could use this great, great information. Uh, as I mentioned before, if you or a student that you know need a little help in their study skills, hey, simply go over to kantasimmons.com forward slash study skills to get my free uh, study skills challenge every single day. I will share a different study tip, a study tip that can be turned into a study habit that can help your students improve their grades in school. Simply go over to kantasimmons.com forward slash study skills. If uh, you want a copy of my book and want to send it to a student or a college student, Hey, go over to playyouragamebook.com. It talks about how to remain focused, how to succeed in school, how to improve those study skills, and how to remain focused. Simply go over to playyouragamebook.com. Again, remember this, only one game in life counts, and that is to play your A game. Thanks for watching this video. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.